So we are finishing up week two, and I'm going to do a review of sections one through four right now, and then we're going to jump into section five, right angle trigonometry, which we've really already been doing. It's just a slightly different way to describe the trig functions, but it's equivalent. So summary of trigonometry today. So trigonometry basics. So, so far we've been looking at circles and in particular circles centered at the origin. And then we have some angle based on a radius coming out of the origin also. And usually we call that angle the Greek letter theta. That leads to a point on the circle. So there's a radius leading out to that point, and that point has coordinates x, y. And we've also been looking at that as a triangle because we can drop a perpendicular here. And so we have this right triangle here, r is the hypotenuse, y is the vertical component, x is the horizontal component. Based on that, we've learned that the values of x and y vary depending on what theta is. So x is a function of theta and y is a function of theta, and those functions have very special names. So we've learned that the cosine of that angle theta on any circle is going centered at the origin, important, is going to be equal to the x value divided by the radius. The sine of that angle theta in standard position. Standard position means it starts at the positive x-axis and goes around counterclockwise is y divided by the radius. We picked up some new trig functions the other day, tangent, abbreviated TAN, of the angle, which is the y value divided by the x value. We grabbed another function called the secant theta, which is the radius divided by the x value. We also got the cosecant, SC, uh, CSC, cosecant of theta. And that one is the radius divided by the y value. And then we got the cotangent, COT. And that is theta, got to have an angle. And that one is x over y. And we noticed that uh, these are have some relationships to each other. They all involve x, y, and r, and so we can kind of play around with them a little bit. And we'll look at some new ways to do that. The tangent can be viewed as the sine of theta over the cosine of theta. The secant of theta we can see here is the reciprocal of the cosine, x over r versus r over x. So one over cosine of theta. Cosecant r over y sine y over r. So those guys are reciprocals. So that's one over the sine of theta. And then the cotangent x over y versus the tangent y over x, those are reciprocals too. So that's one over the tangent. So a few different ways to view those. Other big thing that we learned about are special angles and that radians are the most important uh, measurement of an angle instead of degrees. And if we know the first quadrant, then we know, and, and the uh, symmetry of a circle, we know just about everything we need to know about the whole circle. Oops. That's a line, I want a curve. So I'm gonna draw my best semicircle or a quarter circle. And then I'm gonna lay out the special angles. So our special angles, we have pi over six about there. Pi over four goes right through the middle, line y equals x. Pi over three, about right there. And then we also have zero degrees and two pi. So we have zero, zero radians. So we have zero radians down here. That leads to the point one, zero, if we're on the unit circle. Say we are on the unit circle. 
And then we have this first angle here is our pi over six. And that leads to the point square root of three over two, one half. And we have this point here, which is related to the angle pi over four. And that's where X and Y are equal, square root of two over two, square root of two over two, pi over three, where we get X is one half, Y is square root of three over two, and then over here, we have the angle pi over two, a right angle, and that's the point zero one. And we also viewed that information in table form, reminding ourselves that here, each of these points x, y on the unit circle is the cosine of the angle we're given for x and the sine of the angle we're given for y. So that is a summary of sections one through four. Uh, let's see what else could I add to this as part of the summary. Relations between degrees and radians are a good thing to remember. So we know that if we go around a quarter of the way, that's pi over two radians is the same as 90 degrees. A common way to switch between degrees and radians is to go halfway around the circle which would be pi radians or 180 degrees. Other important things we learned, let's see, arc lengths. Arc length is the radius times the radian angle, which is nice. And let's see, one other cute fact that we learned is important about the tangent. If we look at that, the tangent of the angle, right? So that right there is the angle that we make is y over x, which is rise over run, which is slope. So tangent can be viewed as a function that converts angles to slopes, which is pretty cool. All right, those are all the big points. That needs to be committed to memory. Oh, actually I should add one more thing. The most famous identity of all, the Pythagorean identity. That if we take the cosine of some angle and then square it, and we take the sine of that same angle and square it, that's always going to be one. And that's just a direct result of the Pythagorean theorem on our triangles, our circles.